Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Painted in Color podcast. I'm co-host Lauren Brown, joined by co-host Mia Araujo and Eric Wilkerson. Today, we have a very free-form conversation about little touches of reality, what it means to be an artist in this very, very digital world, how to stay present in the moment, and how to stay connected with other people and yourself. So let's get into it. Eric, what are you working on right now? I am uh, finishing my uh, another magic card. I'm like, I wanted to paint this one digitally, but I mean, oils, but uh, my son had his tonsils taken out. Oh, no. Uh, like, like last week. So I knew there was going to be a lot going on this month. So I said, well, I know I, I can't predict what's going to happen. So let me not be punching myself in the face for having a half finished oil painting, you know, at the due date. So probably for the best that you, anyway, you can just get it done. And that's great that you can take both mediums to a good polish. So you don't have to worry about which one the client will get. Like some people don't are not as strong in digital me, you know, as they are in traditional. So it just feels kind of like you're you're giving the client a little bit less if you had to make that choice. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, yeah. Equally well, good. I mean, I've I've even told students that like if you are coming from one medium and going into another, make sure that they're one to one. Yeah, yeah. Um, or play with brushes, play with textures, do whatever you got to do so that they don't know the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's um, like not so distinguishable. That you're like, oh, like this is clearly like not the same caliber that I was expecting. Right. Like yeah. there were there are oil painters that when they went digital, I could not tell. And I was, I would have to stand there in the bookstore looking for digital brush strokes, (laughs) something that tell to tell me. And after like a couple minutes, you see those, those little texture sparkles or something like that, the little grit, you know, you didn't do that with a brush. Yeah. That's not a brush effect. There's no way you've done this. (laughs) Okay. Got it. I see your tricks. But still, but, any layman would never know that it was no. oil or digital. Like, they just like, this is awesome art, and that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I need to start painting with acrylics because I think that's probably what best would mimic my digital style. Um, and I want like, to start producing traditionals this year. So, yeah, yeah we'll see. It'd be like nice to get off the computer. For that, that uh, piece that you just showed me. That'd be really fun. That would be yeah. Nice. That'd be really fun. You need I mean, to have to have a steady hand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, true. Outlining. But like that's the that's the name of the game, right? Because I love line art so much. So I want to be able to translate my line art into brush strokes and actually be able to, you know, have that feel to it. That same feel. I guess in see uh, color acrylics. Color like huh? color would work really well too. Like just like find like almost like an inking brush kind of look with with like washy kind of colors. Like that would look beautiful with your style. Yeah, you you say that like I haven't been feeling up watercolor paper at the art store lately. Just like <laughs> pull out a drawer of Reeves BFK and just like let my yeah. hand glide over the tooth of the paper. I'm like, mm, yes, that cold press, delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna know exactly what kind of paper you're talking about. You know exactly. It's the most. It's the best one, right? Oh. <laughs> just. Wait, I mean, what's the difference? Is it the smooth or the? Which one is got the tooth to it? Cold is press is the toothy press? one. Okay, so I'm a hot press guy. You like the smoother one? Yeah. No, I like I like the catch in the brush, like just like that. I like the, how the the water absorbs into the te- the teeth and disperses amongst the texture. It just oh. feels so tactilely satisfying. It's wonderful. I love watercolor okay. painting. I really miss it. And like back when I was a student, when I was actually doing watercolor, I didn't have the money to buy expensive behind Re- Reeves BFK. But now I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and I can buy me a few sheets of Reese BFK and let myself have a day but then I would have to um I feel like I have to build up myself to it because I would be too nervous to like mess it up yeah. or whatever so I would have to do a few practice rounds and get a handle for the medium again yeah. but yeah eventually like either watercolor or acrylic um or oil. I mean I, I've painted in all three but it's just been a long time since I've done any of them and I'm not Back good in being college. Bad at- we learned how to erase <laughs> watercolor paint. What? With water or how? Like, would you pick so, it up with the um, blotty, the tape, paper towel? So that's why. Like, that's why. What is it? The hot press is the one smooth. Yeah, yeah. The smooth one. We used we used a hot press 
three ply or whatever it is bristol board it wasn't mm-hmm. even like watercolor paper it was oh, bristol board and we would put a i know this is off topic but we would put down our, our so our, my watercolor painting teacher was a children's book illustrator yeah so we're going back to a guy that was doing busting out stuff back in the 90s and when they wanted revisions he was easily able to a uh, uh you know, adjust his watercolor paintings for his book. Um, so the the Bristol board, he would he taught us to put a layer of gouache white down on the on the paper. Once that gouache white was dry, like it's like that's your gesso. Think of that as your gesso. Then you're gonna draw over top of that and do your your page for your children's book or whatever your illustration is. Then mm-hmm. you can go over top of that with your watercolor painting and do, you know, this beautiful job. But if somebody says, well, we don't, we want you to take out that character in the background, or we want you to change this or change that. He would soak up the brush and soak up the area where that character is. And that would penetrate through the watercolor into the gouache white ground and he was able to use a dry brush to absorb everything wow. so that now you are left with the original white of the Bristol board. So it would disperse whatever was like, oh, that's so cool. Takes everything off. And so when we were doing, we would be doing portraits or or, or traditional like uh, studies, like figure painting in class and watercolor. And like the whites and the highlights and the of, of the face and all that stuff, we were just lifting the paint right off, <laughs> and exposing the original white of the paper, That's awesome. and that is the like the nerdiest. Thing <laughs> I said, talk to people no, about. I love stuff like, like this. Free digital, like that's what we used to do, and uh, they don't teach that at like <laughs> they don't teach that in schools now. It's like oh, what layer did you use? What prompts did you use? <laughs> what layer- <laughs> <laughs> what pro- don't even say that don't what even say that in the days <laughs> kill <Yeah>. me <laughs> absolutely not not even it was a whole different conversation whole different world it what is. program did you do that in <laughs> no, that clip studio no 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 like, no that was uh traditional media baby yeah. but that's what that's what i want to get to i want to fool people and have people think my traditionals are my digitals and have them be indistinguishable but then i have a piece that I can be like, hey, this is like 20, you know, 18 by 24. You want to buy this for like $5,000. Nobody's going to buy this for $5,000. You don't want to buy this for $5,000. You never know. <laughs> you never yeah, know. It's true. Yeah. But I, I got to get back into it too, because I'm just, I've become just tired of looking at screens all day because that's what I do for work. And then when I get off of work and do my personal work, it's still looking at a screen and I get to sequester myself in an office. I'm like, I want to like, have that like little idyllic backdrop of like being in my sunroom and like sun rays are shining and I have my like you know palette and my canvas and my you know easel set up and everything and you know I'm in like some dress like very much like this one right now and like I'm just like painting like you know these like little details and flowers and my cats are like running around like it's just (laughs) I want that life I can have that life I'm so close (laughs) you just have to mix colors and and mix colors but (laughs) start over more But I miss it because I get to touch my art. I miss touching my art, my finished art. Um, it's a, it's just a different feeling. So yeah, I got to get back into it. It feels good. What are we even talking about? What's going on? <laughs> hey, we're talking about traditional media, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, but like, how do you store your 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 paintings? Because like, especially you, Mia, I think, because like Eric, you, I think you sold a lot of your paintings, but have you I mean you've sold your you sold a lot of your paintings to me but you still have a lot yeah. in your studio how do you store them I mean I just prop them up like I probably should protect them more <laughs> they're just like, around <laughs> yeah. I mean the sad thing is the finished ones are just on the, my easel behind me like just stacked in front of each other oh, I don't no. have enough room to like spread me? them out because there's so many of them right now <laughs> wait don't they get like, stick to each other if it gets too hot no, they haven't yet oh, well. <laughs> But I mean, it was just to professionally like store them and stuff. I actually usually put like a sheet of like acid free, either like vellum or tracing paper on over top of it and then kind of package it, whether that's with 
bubble wrap bubbles away obviously never bubbles towards the painting yeah um, but I don't actually use bubble wrap anymore I use that like um that silver like insulation stuff or whatever like from Lowe's or whatever like it's just um it's like thicker it's more durable than than bubble wrap and it's um it's like super protective so it's like you can I, I just like wrap it like gift wrap with that stuff you know okay and in my closet but yeah nothing I like that. <laughs> yeah we have like a lot of like stories of like invent of, like not, I, I don't want to say inventory that's like commodifying it like a lot but it's just like you just have a bunch of like pieces yeah. all around and you know eventually they could go to a happy home or, or something <laughs> like that <laughs> grace some wall somewhere but it's so it's they, I, I'm sure it becomes so much I'm like where would I even store all this stuff if I want to get into it yeah I've I get seen so artists put um use uh, wall trim or i believe it's wall trim <clears throat> like the the two two inch by however long and they mount that on the wall and since it's got the little grooves and the lip to it you can just rest oh. drying oil paintings on that and just make rows oh, oh that's clever i like yeah. that I don't have enough free wall space that's not covered by like either framed art hanging up or bookshelves so that that's my problem I can't yeah. I don't have wall space to even hang up those but that's amazing I love that idea that's but really that's cool that's idea. one option and then um I've seen artists uh one of my mentors has but he's got the physical space he's got a whole um separate studio from his house and one of his closets has this rolling cart that comes out of his closet and he just slides he's got these sleeves individual sleeves mm. uh, the length of his closet and he just rolls this tray out and slides the painting in and just pushes the whole thing back into wow, his closet like a flat file? huh like a flat file or like a flat file but it's vertical that's so cool that's really yeah, cool okay. so, yeah that would like, be handy. when i get money one day i'll do yeah. the same thing now yeah. i just i have a closet that i put stuff in but <laughs> They're kind of like, it's just in a box and I just push the box. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I think Andrew Thompson also has a flat file. It's like, he said his like mom found it at some like estate sale for like $200. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Because those things are not cheap. They're not cheap at all. They're really expensive. I would love to have a flat file. I'm almost, I don't even know what I would use it for yet, but I just want one because I, I, I want to preemptively have one. <laughs> I got like, one from uh, Ikea. It's the uh, the Frugenglagen. That's, that's how do you know the name of it? That thing is a beast so heavy. Really? Well, that's probably what it was actually called. I'm <laughs> oh, pretty yeah. sure that's the, so the casually the of it. said it. <laughs> it's, a it's awesome. Almost like threw my back out just trying to lift it onto the cart and get oh, the hell geez. out of that joint. But so heavy yeah, it's been great. Glagen. So I hope those things are fireproof. Like for how heavy they are, I hope they at least are protecting my art from a fire. Like, you know. Like, please tell me they are. Yeah, they better be. <laughs> I think I think that's, is that the point of them? Are flat files supposed to be fireproof? It just occurred I, to me that they should be, but I don't They think. definitely, I, don't I was also think thinking, so. I was like, what if my house happened? And like, <laughs> I want my stuff to be protected if it's like, you know, storing art. If, if my house would have burned, I would rip my computer out and throw it out the window right there next to me. And I would grab one painting in this house. No, I, I, Mia's painting is actually on my wall. <laughs> Mia's painting and my Howard Lyon painting is on the wall right now. So I would grab that, the Howard, and my computer, and I'd throw them all out the window and then like, <laughs> just dive out after it. And, uh, <laughs> and the rest of the house can go. I take this camera. This camera. What about your family, too. Eric? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I would hope that they had found their way out uh, one of the other exits. What about your I would be like, paintings? I'm like, yeah, you're you're not your own art. You're not saving any pieces from your for yourself. Nah, I mean, I can always re I can always make new art. Like that's, that's such a great attitude. Like, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. As long I as I haven't you run exist. out of ideas, it's just you know, there's what a lot the of for your I got a lot of files on my computer that would take forever to replace but but that's the you, i know we are so off topic but that's <laughs> you know that's what we could also do is uh, um 
for anybody that is really nervous about their computers crashing, uh, uh, having an online backup. Yes. Uh, Cannot recommend that enough. Like, I just use Google Drive. I bought the terabyte update. Like, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to pay for storage. Like, because I, I store basically everything. I back up every computer that I, like, move from um, onto it. And I also have a, or a external hard drive, too. Yeah. Just to, like, have, um, you know, fail safes. And I can get it. You can access anywhere, too. So it's always really smart to have that. Yeah. Speaking of there's which, a, I'm like, oh, a 3D, There's a 3D artist. I can't remember his name. Uh, Jama something. Oh, yeah. Jama uh, Jarga. Yeah. He he was talking about how he lost a bunch of stuff, um, but then he, for after that nightmare experience, he started just backing up uh, to an online service, and uh, I forget the name, uh, something Blaze, I can't remember the name, I have it bookmarked, but um, just having that peace of mind, yeah. because my entire art drive on my computer uh, crashed last year oh geez really it was a year before that i can't remember but um i lost everything like oh my god but i ended up having to send it i ended up having to send the drive off to a a service that was able to recover it all oh oh really they got everything they it, it was like complete disk failure it was a and it was an SSD drive too, so which which was blew my mind. I'm like, I didn't know that could happen, but it did. Wow. So, um, they were able to recover it all. And one of the re- people that in the recovery service, he emails me and he goes, "Hey, I love your work. I'm a big <laughs> Magic Card fan. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome! And, like, he wanted me to autograph some stuff for him if he mailed it to me. And I'm like. What are you going through my shit for? <laughs> <laughs> he just like sees your art on the computer. He's like, hey, yeah. Actually, I know, so, I know who you are. Some some dude is out there with yeah. like a couple years worth of my stuff that hasn't been dropped yet. <laughs> so <laughs> funny! Oh my but thank god, you. he's kept it to himself. Yeah. But Whoops. He's <laughs> like, let me just drag this over to my external drive real quick. It, I mean, he, uh, he probably did though. Sorry, Eric. He's got I'm he's sure definitely he got did. your stuff stored away. I'm sure he did. I'm like, well, thanks for letting me know you've been all up in my stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> listen, as long as you get the files back, like whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. It's like, isn't this like a breach of contract? Like, why are you in there? <laughs> right. So right. Good. He could have totally just kept that to himself, but he said. I must email him and see if he'll sign something. He's just a big fan. He's a fanboy. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't worried about it, but that's oh. really cute. I love that. But yeah, it's it's so scary to think about like all of my things. Like I was like, what do I do with like all the things? But like basically, most of the art that I've made has been either posted somewhere or sent to whatever client it was done for. So, on like you know gmail so i'm like there's i have a copy of it somewhere even if it's not the layered file i have it mm-hmm. um there's like a lot of different forms of backup but i like to put it in multiple places just in case i'm like what like google's probably like you know like, what if google fails it's probably not going to happen but just in case i'd like to have like a, a second backup to the backup so i want to keep it that's what it's it's called backblaze backblaze, backblaze. okay um, that's good to know yeah so backblaze. Do you guys have one um like external hard drive or do you have multiple at a time? Like I know digital only friends that have like two or three running at the same time. Oh really? I no. Two. I have one. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I have one and then I have the cloud uh storage. Because um I mean that should should in theory be enough? Yeah. But I can understand like if, like if all your work is digital like i could understand the fear of like maybe that one drive fails and that's the only place it's at like i definitely get that paranoia like i feel like i would do that too yeah yeah <laughs> even though actually no that's not true i have a flash drive that is on my keychain um and sort of, this was for when i would do convention print runs and if I needed an emergency print run, I would always have the prints that I was making for that convention on this external flash drive. And I would have it with me because I have my keys. And wherever I could go, if I had to do emergency prints, I would just like run in a 
crappy you know office max or whatever and just be like hey can you print this real quick and um they could just like plug it right in and you know get it going so actually i do technically have two external uh hard drives it's actually a great idea yeah it's been i've had that thing i am amazed that it's still kicking because i've had it for over 10 years now and most of the time the cap is not on <laughs> <laughs> and it, somehow it still works <laughs> i remember one of those things not to date myself but used to be like so much money for so little space and now you can get like a tiny ass little thing for like two terabytes <laughs> and it's like 10 bucks or something yeah right it's like i was like oh it's 64 you know like whatever like megabytes <laughs> yeah like 32 or something like <laughs> like oh that's so much space i don't need all that space yeah. and then slowly it's just like no like here's here's 5tb just like go go away somewhere <laughs> easy easy but yeah it's it's interesting uh like to think about just different methods of like what you have to worry about being traditional versus digital because there's always a way to lose information but you had a good point eric it's like as long as you the artist exists you can always make more art yeah. so i like that way of looking at it it's not like you're going to necessarily forget. What are we talking about? What's going on? <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounded at first when you were first talking about doing traditional painting and stuff, like, you, and, and talking about your wanting to touch your paintings. Like, we're just craving reality, aren't we? You know, like, these days. <laughs> yeah. I was actually just having this conversation with somebody. What were you about to say, Eric? Well, there's there's just a growing number of students that have no interest in traditional media really like, there's I, I i have a number of students that have never touched it have no interest in mm. painting for real for real um they grew up watching youtube videos that's mm. how they learned how to make art yeah they learned how to make art from other tradition other digital artists that had no idea what they were doing and said well that's how it's done and so when they come to me it's unlearning what they've learned mm -hmm. is the hardest part and you just mm -hmm. gotta go no we don't do it like that and then they want to fight me on so <laughs> you know, like all right <laughs> so like that's well, so sad to me i don't know like yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people our age that are doing digital i've seen more and more say i want to do more traditional i find that interesting that it's like our generation is turning back towards traditional the ones that weren't already doing it you know yeah right. we're craving it because i mean i feel like a part of it is like the pandemic zeitgeist now where we've been in our houses for so long faced with screens and screen it was funny i saw a twitter post about um they were like i get off i get off of work from my screen to reward myself with my little screen while watching my big screen <laughs> <laughs> so i was like oh no <laughs> it's true <laughs> It's and like, your eyes are just like help me <laughs> yeah it's like i don't want to look at this anymore it's just like i just want i just want something real again i want to, i want to be i want to touch physical things and be out in the world like this is this is maybe a little bit off topic but in the same vein of just like you know i've been i i tried to do like online dating and i was just like scrolling through people's faces and i'm like i just i i just want to see real people like i know these are real people somewhere that in the city but i just want to have genuine human connection out in the world and like just have conversations with people yeah. and just make friends and get stories and share a little bit of joy and like have a little laugh and then walk away like having that little memory yeah. um i was recently at ren fair i think last weekend i think it was last that weekend like fun it was so much fun um thank you <laughs> it was really fun and uh, what I had endeavored to do was like get little, um, these little glass marbles that were like colored, like same color as my outfit. And uh, I, I kept them and I would give them to people who had really cool outfits that like inspired me. And I would just like hand them to them like, you look awesome, give them your little marble and like run away. And uh, there was a little girl who was dressed as like a blue fairy, like all blue. Um, and she was probably like, you know, eight or nine. And uh, we were like sitting at this restaurant and I saw her come in and I was like, oh my God, she's so adorable. And so I handed her the little marble and I was like, I love your outfit. And she was like, oh my God, like her, the way her eyes lit up was just so magical. And then um, at the end of their meal, they came, she came to our table and she was like, I have something for you. And she gave me these little star beads, um, like these like, cute little star beads. And I put them in my hair. If I can find them, I'll show you. But 
they're like little trinkets of like every time every time I look at them oh my this, is, this is the little girl <laughs> I love that so much yeah so like little interactions like that are like what I realize I'm craving like just re like touches of reality yeah. being out in nature touching grass having conversations touching my art again just being tactile yeah. because I think that at least our generation has grown up with a world where that was all it was mm -hmm. and then digital took over and it was, it's been really cool to like see how you know connected people are but as connected as we are we also feel so isolated because we're not sharing physical space with people yeah. and I'm not being like you know uh boomer like all oh, these dang gen z like no like that's what they grew up with so that's all they had but knowing what was I think people need people and people need to be around that energy and that reality again you know this can't the screen can't be and it's ironic because we're you know we're recording um a youtube you know channel or whatever but you know this this can't be all there is to reality yeah. because tangibly there's nothing there yeah i mean well, honestly, the, there's people that <clears throat> sorry no go ahead. go ahead people that miss having that ta something tangible to hold on to when they when they're looking at art online there's one feeling that it gives you, but then it's something quite different to have a physical object in your possession and say, I own that. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I could touch that painting. It looks so much different than the JPEG I see on my phone. And there's, I mean, especially when you, you see certain types of art selling for thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, um, a digital artist can't compete with that. They just can't. It's like you could do the most kick-ass magic card of all time. And what you just got a couple, you know, you'll sell a couple hundred dollars worth of prints from it, maybe. You might uh, versus could. huh? <laughs> no, go on. Versus uh versus having an actual physical painting to sell to somebody that might have dropped 10 grand on it yeah and then you can sell prints of it too and then you can sell prints so it's like <laughs> double the money yeah like you can triple the money it's great yeah so, yeah Mia, Mia, what were you about to say it was slightly off topic but um i think it was um oh it was just that in the past i used to think in order to feel to to sort of like un unwind or feel like i'm like i feel like i'm always wired when i'm like stressed and burned out and whenever I want relief from that, my thought would be, I need to go to nature to like dewire my brain or whatever the term is that we use for that. I'm blanking on it right now. But now I don't think it's just nature. I think it's just anything real, you know? Yes. And it's just, it's both because nature is definitely one of those. But I think that it does, I mean, we've not evolved yet to be, you know, independent of real experiences and nature as humans, right? Like, I think that the digital stuff is still very new in our evolutionary history Extremely for new. us to just be fully adapted to it. And, and we like to say, too, that the younger generations are, like, more adapted to it. But I don't think, I mean, there's also a lot of mental health crisis going on in those generations, too, which I think has something to do with that. Again, not yeah. a boomer, but I'm just saying, just biologically speaking, we are not adapted to this kind of life. And no. I think that's why we crave that as a release, you know? Yeah, we're also not meant to be like to have to intake that much information. Like I think I was again, I was having a conversation with somebody and it's just like we're taking literally a global like a global scales worth of information into our brains at any given day. Mm -hmm. And we're exposed to all the crises that are happening everywhere. And like previously, you would just be in your little community and you all you would know is like your little community and like your the, whatever farm you're maintaining or like whatever people are, who are around you. And that was it. And I, I don't know what that feels like because like that was never my life uh, but like still I think that's what the human brain had been adapted for to have like a little pocket of people that it was around and now we're exposed to thousands upon thousands of people like and we have we can have all these conversations and have all this information coming in and it's just like there I think there is such a thing as being too connected to everything because when you get all this information of like presented at the same level of like it looks like equal importance then like how is anything important like how can you parse through all of it how can you filter through like what you actually want to see rather than what's just being shown to you yeah. you don't know 
And so you're getting exposed to things and that's why people are getting depressed and people are getting, um, you know, like miserable. Like this is just a general sense of ennui because we see all these, these things happening in the world and like, there's no way to turn off from that. Um, you know, there's, there's no way to, to filter through that unless you like actively disconnect and just let yourself be yourself. Cause you can't, you, there's not much you can do with a lot of the information that's out there. There really isn't. You just have it now. <laughs> and you start to forget important things like people's phone numbers or like people's birthdays yeah. and things like that like like me I've forgotten all these things I'm like oh no I used to be so good at memorization I used to be so good at math and like I can't parse anything now because like these things are doing all the thinking for me yeah. um and Eric what you said earlier was pretty funny because uh you said like you know people uh, you you could create a piece of art and people hold this physical object and that like this one thing is theirs they own it and you know even like that has been like the, the whole nft thing it's just like look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power because <laughs> you right. have to blow out the power of a whole city block in order to run that and like right. <laughs> or enough. you could just have a physical painting in your hand that is actually the thing <laughs> like you're inventing all these replacements for things we already have can we use this freaking brain power for something else please like something that will actually help like uh... i never understood the whole nft <laughs> thing and I talked to artists that, uh, you know, their their actual paintings or oil paintings, they posted that stuff as a NFT, and somebody bought the JPEG for however many thousands of dollars, and so then the artist contacts the client and says, "Well, I could sell you, I could give you the original oil painting too," and they refused it. I'm like, oh, I, I, I got my JPEG. I'm good. I could not believe that. Uh, like, I, I can't believe, believe that it. I will give you the painting. And they said no. What? They said no to the physical I don't, how? I don't, I don't. Maybe they don't have I, space, but still, it's just I don't, like, I don't even know how to think about that. <laughs> that's so valuable. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I don't, I don't even understand. So, what happened to us as a species? <laughs> it's it like that so meme with the woman where she goes, <laughs> Ooh, like that you seen <laughs> that where the like oh it's, like, like, it's kombucha girl meme just yeah, like ex well, except was, the oil painting well i was thinking mm -mm. the drake thing but yeah you're, you're oh not... the, yeah the drake thing is also just like mm -mm. yeah pay 10 grand for a jpeg <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad do you want the physical painting mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. but why i think oh. it's like we just become so materialistic this need to own things but we run out of space so quick right and it's just like it's that idea where it's just like well i can keep owning things but i don't need to have space for them because they're virtual now and then i can create endless you know places to own things it, but just but I, like, i understand that as a concept but i i just don't understand the value i'm just like just yeah materialistic. Like, i mean the value is manufactured right like it's it's just an image that you could take a screenshot of but the value is ascribed to by the community yeah. um just like i guess like just like anything else really not that i'm making a case for nfts at all because that's not what i'm doing but like i'm just trying to reason it out in my head like if somebody said x is worth you know t like 100 grand then that thing becomes sought after and mm -hmm. like if if multiple people have established that this thing is indeed worth 10 grand then the person who owns it is like yeah i have this it's like a status symbol just mm -hmm. like I guess like you know royalty or whatever um you know it all like I feel like it those kinds of things perpetuate themselves where owning expensive things is a symbol of status and wealth and says something about the person who owns it but the fact that it's just data it's like now the the money is in owning data but it's not because the market has crashed so it's like <laughs> where is the money but I guess it's the same with art though too because like physical art the value is ascribed to by the artist and if enough people say yes i agree with you that this is worth that much then people will want to own it yeah um and so it's just like intrinsic value is basically what it is it's, sure. you know i that's it's never quite made perfect sense but sure <laughs> but at least with physical art there is the scarcity idea that there was only one of these whereas the thing there can only be one nfts is the jpeg thing it reminds me of like the beanie baby craze <laughs> 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 It's like those things just were never rare enough to actually be valuable, but some people bought it for a really long time that they were. 
Oh, oh definitely. Realized, oh no, they're not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember I used to collect when I was a kid. Um, I had like the catalogs and everything, and I went to a Beanie Baby convention. And uh, <laughs> this is an aside, but uh, as I you know grew up and be like got nieces and nephews. Uh, I was like, okay, like, I'm going to give my Beanie Baby collection to my nephew, like my little, you know, back when he was like, you know, six years old. And I was like, hey, like, here's some Beanie Babies that I used to collect when I was a kid. Like, here you go. And he was like, oh, like, he looked at it. I was like, oh, thank you, Auntie Lauren. Took the tag and rip. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and my sister saw me actively flinch and like, right. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I, I worked so hard to protect it. <laughs> I felt that in my soul. <laughs> I would never forget that feeling because I spent years just like keeping them clean and safe. <laughs> oh, this is a toy. <laughs> what a dose of reality that was. Oh, because really, again, intrinsic value. It is a toy. Sure, it is yeah. a piece of plush material that was definitely factory made. And, you know, like, like when in the grand scheme of things, it's probably like worthless, right? But because us as a society or a, a community at least said, this thing is worth, uh, you know, two hundred dollars. Then you like go through all the lengths to get all the stuff for it and protect it and like cultivate it and keep it safe and put it on a pedestal. And so like that's just, you know, that's basically what that's what society does though. Like always, like shiny thing, yeah. you know. Uh, thing like gold is. Well, no, not gold. Gold is a pretty cool metal, I guess. But like, there's certain like you know rocks or whatever. Like we said, like they're worth a lot of money and. They're just pretty, mainly is what it is. Yeah, but you're right that it is linked to community, right? Like you mm -hmm. do a group of people and that sense of belonging makes it make sense why you give value to something, you know, to be part of that group, which is super interesting. As yeah. Well. And that's why I think it is so hard to fake jumping onto all these bandwagons. Like I see those people that just try to chase whatever bandwagon it is. But if you're not actually passionate about that community, it never works, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But my, I mean, my hot take about like tech bros and the nft community and all that stuff is just that this is going to be a hot spicy take but i think that that whatever is in their real world their reality is not quite working for them like they've been rejected by the reality so they go to data instead to find validation i have thought about that when it comes to ai art i was like how freaking convenient that right when it seems like things are somewhat getting more equitable Mm -hmm. like oh actually let's not make physical art anymore yeah because they're like oh we uh, i i get upset when we're not talking about me <laughs> and so like <laughs> let's make it let's form a system that makes us talk about me again let's make me the star of the show again yeah. and it's just like oh now i am so talented as i prompt a thing that required no effort whatsoever like that's I mean, what it's become it has the biases of the majority of the art history that we've had so exactly <laughs> Because there's no, like, if you don't have value in your reality, then that's, that's the, all, that's the recourse. And it's, it's really sad to think about that way. It would be sadder if it wasn't, you know, destroying the, the actual reality and human interaction and connection and sacred human, like, you know, the channeling of like, whatever, whatever you want to call art and creativity, the channels of our experiences in a way that is like creative and special to a person it's like let's manufacture that yeah and it's like you you have to be living a really sad reality to want to actively create a system like that yeah i'm not talking about the people who use it i'm talking about the people who stood that up and said this mm -hmm. we we can we can outsource this now yeah, it's yeah. like this is not never something to outsource at all exactly. it's really sad it really is really sad like i want to learn how to be more creative not to let something else be created for me you know yeah yeah but like i don't know reality reality is just so beautiful and important and you know I, i've been realizing that too like as, especially after being stuck in the house over pandemic um just, or just like because i got used to just being inside all day and i'm like oh i i need to go outside and i have the forest park the moment i go outside my mind just clears and i can just like walk around and like look at like ants being in a log <laughs> or i guess the termites that like break down logs and stuff but yeah like I would just like kind of kick a petrif like a rotted log and like see all the termites like being like oh I was like oh and I just like crouched down and watched it for like a while and I was like oh that was nice <laughs> and just like let myself be a child again there was an episode of have y'all seen Bluey no. yeah I, I was like I I'm pretty sure Eric had seen Bluey because you have children <laughs> yeah. but Bluey is legit good there was there was one episode um of Bluey that was uh 
I think it was called Born Yesterday. And the premise of the episode was that the dad was like playing this game called Born Yesterday, where he's like, didn't want to answer any more questions. So he was acting like he was born yesterday and kind of like adopted this whole persona of like somebody who's like brand new to the world. Uh, and so like the kids were like kind of like running him around, like teaching him new things about the world. And there was like one point in the episode where he like found a leaf and he just like picked it up and just like stared at it. And it was like they zoomed in and it's like the sun shining through like the veins of the leaves. And he was just like, st- like got lost in it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And after he like, you know, they're like, okay, like went home, the game is over. Like they were like, where's your dad? And he was like outside, like staring at a leaf again. Like <laughs> it was just so, it was so sweet and wholesome because it's like, yeah, one of the secrets to life is just being fascinated with the things that are around you and like being amazed that any of this exists at all, that we can be human beings. Yeah. And yeah, and just like just being lost in the wonder of life, and in this moment right now is never going to be the same. Like all of a sudden, that just I think when I first like realized that, it just actually made me super emotional. That it's like every moment is dying at every moment, you know. And if you take a oh. minute, you know, but not in a morbid way. I just mean in the sense that if you take a moment to appreciate it, you got to be there in that same space at the same time. Like there's something really like I don't know. It gives me the goosebumps to think about that. Like yeah. And how many of those moments we miss just by not being in real life is is really sad to me. Yeah, yeah, because like yeah, it all it all makes it too easy to not be present. So just like let hours and hours go by, and you don't even know how you spent them. Yeah. And I saw I felt that happening to me. Um, you know, oftentimes, especially when I felt like really down and depressed. But it's probably part of the reason why I felt so down and depressed. And uh, you know, now I've been making an active effort to just like go out to places and talk to people. So it's um. You know, it's like changing my mentality and my mindset is actually feeding back into my art because my my I didn't feel inspired to create art for a little bit. And then, you know, now I'm starting to feel better and like more energetic and just more connected with things just like in the few weeks of of, of making an effort to do that more. So for like I, I know that a lot of people feel art blocked and a lot of people feel uh, uninspired and a general sense of ennui. Um, and I think, yeah, like just it's been a trend with a lot of people I've talked to recently. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the ways that you can just like start to try to get yourself out of that is just kind of experience things a little bit more and let yourself have experiences. Don't shy away from them. Um, go outside and look at a thing or talk to a cool stranger and compliment them on how cool their outfit is. Or like you have nice shoes or a nice hat. What are you drawing? You know, like have a little interactions or little pieces of joy in your day. It's, it is tricky to to keep that energy but if it becomes a habit then it's easier to do every day even if it's just a little bit so yeah like but i don't know moral of the story is i want to do watercolors (laughs) (laughs) full circle yeah full circle We were supposed to talk about a completely different topic today, y'all. And it's just like, we immediately went off the rails. <laughs> we did. I know. It's like, we clearly were not ready to talk about that other thing. <laughs> we were talking about what, what we meant to talk about today. Exactly. Like, <laughs> things happen for a reason. <laughs> what are you thinking, Eric? Yeah, yeah I want to know what Eric's thinking. Um, I know we were just talking about being present and... um that dissociation and not being aware of what you do in a day and like different things that you do outside of art to try to stay in the moment. And uh, I think that is all that I I'm really interested in, in anything anybody has to say about that. Um, Because I just keep reading articles about um, doing doing other things doing something outside of what you normally do as much as you possibly can just to keep your brain active yeah Um, Yeah. because anything you do that keeps you keeps you learning new things offsets dementia and alzheimer's and all these things and so i think about like, well, what else could I do with the available time I have in my day? Or should I be reading a certain type of book? Should I be having a certain type of experience um, to make sure that I 
am present. Right? There are photographs I'll look at on my phone, like different things, different events that I took pictures of. I have no idea why. But then I look at other pictures and I know I was fully aware that day. Mm. Was mm. you know, and then I have to ask myself why. Like, well, because you know, like I think of it my brain as a like a tape recorder. Like my brain hit record. <laughs> And at this moment, because you wanted to be able to relive that, relive that experience. Whereas other days, it's just, it's just Tuesday. I don't yeah. know. It's like autobahn. I'm going to eat a burrito, whatever. Yeah. Right. I can zone out. Um, But I, I just think about that a lot. Like, what else should I be doing outside of art? Just to be a well-rounded human being. And then I hear my wife's voice in my head, like, you need to be doing something else other than, you know, like, you'll, you'll wait until you read it, uh, read some internet article before you believe me. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Has she been telling you this the whole time? Years. Oh, years, no. <laughs> years. So it's not like a recent thing. And then if I come to her and say, you know, I should learn how to do other things. I'll get that side eye, like. <laughs> Like, are you seriously? She's like, I've been telling you to do that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, it's like rock being worn away by water, you know? <laughs> yeah. Erosion over time. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, but then I quit stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll i try it, then I'll go, no, I don't want to do that. That's natural, though. That's, 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 that's not bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I heard the quote recently that, like, was like, oh, my God, it makes so much sense, where it was something like, we overestimate how much we can get done in a week but underestimate what we can get done in a year. And because of that, we quit too early before we see those year end results. Yeah. It's like, it really is like, if you could stick it out at the gym, at your new thing that you're learning or whatever, fill in the blank long enough past that phase where it's like, nothing is happening. Yeah. In a year, you would actually then see it. Yeah. And it's like, this is, this is a thing that I'm physically incapable of doing, (laughs) but that's okay. Uh, it's... Denzel Washington has a, a a famous quote about that. Um, goals or something. I, I, I'm terrible. <laughs> terrible. Hello, <laughs> what? It's, hold on. It's... No, yeah, I need to Denzel, Denzel Washington quote. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> on goals, <laughs> right? It's it was on it goals. was a it was a uh... on consistency. There it is. Oh. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. That's a great one. There it's it really is. good. It's there really it good. Is. Like but he gave a about- speech okay. at it, like accepting an award, and he's given that given that same speech while while accepting an award, speaking to other actors, like if this is something you want to do, you gotta you, you gotta, gotta stick with it. Up. You gotta stick with it, right? It's the same thing for anybody that wants to make art for a living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or like I, I see online. There's this one artist, and she's constantly complaining about how nobody, like, she can't find work, and that nobody likes her stuff, or that nobody, she doesn't know how to promote it, and and everything. But I didn't even know she was an artist. Like every time I see her her posts. She's just complaining about something, never showing mm. any art. She's on social media, never showing any art. I go to her, she's linking herself to Instagram. Her Instagram's private. Mm. Like if I got to go through hurdles to see your art, I'm not going to try to contact you. I'm just going to go on to the next person that is out there and just saying, look at me. Yeah, I'm available. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I don't know how to really expect the consistency, but well, here's it's just the consistency of complaining rather than posting art, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're either going to do one or the other, <laughs> right? You let, let people know you exist and, and keep on striving for the next thing, the next, the next job, the next, whatever, the next level, um, or you're going to give up. Yeah. And this is not something that you could just do lightly and say, well, I'll try it for a little while and see what happens. Like you have to be all in. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know anybody that got to a point where they were accepting an Academy Award that said, nah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> like halfway through. Yeah, halfway they probably through. did and then did it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, like that TV show didn't work out. That movie bombed. I'm going to go find a real estate job. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, that's if that's your goal in mind too, right? Like some people, I think some people don't realize that they their goal that they think they have in mind is not actually the goal that their their heart wants because you know like i realized um recently it's like i don't think i'm going to be the best artist in the world like ever and i don't think i even want that i think i just want to make art that makes me happy and make other makes other people happy to see it and that for me like i want to continue to get better and improve and grow my skills and feel good about what i'm making but ultimately that's that's the goal that I want to be like I don't want to be like you know this like pinnacle with like you know millions of followers I don't need that and also it's just like a lot of pressure too from like people who just want me to create whatever I'm just like I just want to be an artist like if it happens and cool but I'm not going to try to go for that because it's just like I would rather have other experiences because like in order to get to that level oftentimes you have to sequester yourself with your art forever and I'm like, I want to go out and touch grass, though, and talk to people and play board games and watch movies and frolic in fields and wear d- cute dresses and go to Ren Faire. Like, I, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Yeah. And it can go back to feed into my art. And, you know, it'll it'll make my art better, ultimately. But if life is only about the one thing, then... I'm going to be a very one-dimensional person. So like, you've got to have different experiences. Um, The perspective I wanted to add about consistency, um, you know, when it's not like your career, it's not your ultimate goal. When it's something like, Hey, like I want to like, I want to learn a new skill or figure out how to work out or like whatever. Um, For, for us who have ADHD, that is very, very hard. Um, and it can also and it can often be very discouraging uh, for ADHDers uh, specifically, or people who just like have real problems with maintaining consistency. Um, when things get boring, it's like anathema to us. We hate it. Um, there's no dopamine that goes behind that activity. But I think oftentimes what happens is that because we roll out of a task after three months or whatever. We feel like we can never go back to it again because it's like an all or nothing mentality a lot of the time. And that's not true. That's just how our brain works. I'm just I'm talking to ADHD people right now. So just stay with me. That's how our brain works. Um, And and how our brain works is okay as long as you don't give up on trying to learn new things. Like, don't let that fear of failure. There's no such thing as failure. You did it for three months. That's awesome. Do something else now. It's like if you found that you enjoyed this method of working out, like if you wanted to, you know, go roller skating for three months and you got pretty good at it and like, okay, now I'm bored of this, do something else. Like, okay, now I want to figure out how to rock climb or I want to figure out how to do this. Like you can try different things uh, if you can't maintain consistency, but don't let the way your brain naturally works guilt you out of going back to new habits or establishing new habits. Because I did that to myself for a long time, and I would feel really, really guilty about my lack of consistency. But really, my lack of consistency was just my brain telling me that I was bored and I want to learn something else now. Yeah, and actually, that, that I'm so glad you brought that up because, again, when you think about consistency, you think of someone who never stops, right? So it's like somebody who's always in the studio every single day and always produces at this level every day. And to me, that's not how I see consistency at all. It's like most days, or even in your example, three months, you did that for three months. You're allowed to take a break from that and then come back. You still succeeded. Yeah. It's just like, if you think about it more so as like looking for the reward or the success story at the end of that commitment, instead of always looking for the failure, you know, or the proof of failure. And that's, I, I am talking as much to myself too, as I am to everyone else in the sense that I almost feel like I'm always looking for proof of the failure. I feel like I really am. And that's like, I'm masking success in some way, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's usually, but we all do that to ourselves because we mm-hmm. beat ourselves up so much, but it's maybe try it the other way where you're like, where can I find the proof of my success? I actually did a good job here, you know, even though yeah. it doesn't work in the way that this rule step is saying that it should or whatever it is. But I, I still see three months of working on something as consistency, even though it might not be by the rule book of what you consider it to be, you know? Yeah. 
I mean, and you know, in my bullet journal, which I'm not, which I'm no longer consistent with because there was an error for that. And my brain doesn't want to do that anymore. And that's fine. But when I had my bullet journal and when I was doing that, I started to actively write down the things that I accomplished that day rather than all the things like I would, you know, obviously I would have to record the tasks that I need to get done the next day, but also make an effort to say, here's what I actually accomplished today, blah, 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 blah. And like, once I actually listed it out, I realized how much I did that day. Even if I felt like I did nothing that day, there was always at least like five things that I got done that day. And I was like, huh, like I'm much more active than I thought I was like, that's crazy. But I always see the things that I didn't do. And that's what my mind would hold on to. And so I would have a very negative outlook of myself. So flipping that is really important, like you said, Mia, to see what your successes were rather than your perceived failures. Because a lot of time failures aren't really failures either. Um, There's just like, oh, like it was just a, a step towards progress, but it just looks like failure because it didn't turn out the way you hoped it would. And sometimes there's actually failures and that's okay too, because you learn from them. You can apply those lessons to later and you're still alive. As long as you're still alive, you're, you're still, you have plenty of time to do successes, even if they're small. I used to have a, a, a journal that I would write in and anything that, anything I felt was important enough to write down or funny or stressful, I would. I would write it down just as a way of jogging my memory or just being able to replay the day. Even if I look back at the journal, like years later and be like, I remember this now, right? Key yeah. moments, but then stuff just kept happening like over and over and over again. There was like always something of importance happening where then I would be so exhausted at the end of the day that I just stopped writing in the journal. I would just mm. say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back and do it. Or I started journaling on my phone. There's an app for it. Yeah. But then I wouldn't look at the app. It's the one thing that that's, yeah. the, I hate doing that because having a physical book in front of you where you could turn the pages was a completely different experience. But then I remembered uh, an illustrator friend of mine, he will do landscape paintings or portrait paintings of just people and events around him and then chronicle like Ooh. write a little journal entry in there in his little moleskin thing. And it'll be like met this sandwich owner, shop owner, blah, 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 while talking to so-so, you know, at this location in France or whatever. <laughs> and so not only was there a, uh, a physical, a, a story, like a journal entry, but there was a almost like a screenshot mm -hmm. of something he was. So it's the art and the it's, I just thought that was so beautiful. It's a visual journal. It's a visual journal. That's like goals. It, it for me. means like, nothing same. to anybody else, but it's like you could now go back into 2015 or wherever, whatever day, whatever year and be like, I remember exactly where I was because now because that's the other part about making art. And if, if you've uh, got ADHD or, or whatever, and you want to stay present, if you are making that journal, but you are also making art, you are recording. When you are making art, you are looking at something in order to transcribe that on paper. Your entire brain is set to record. Yeah. So anything that happens around you during that moment, it's car accident, somebody trips and falls, and you have to stop and like laugh at them. Like you will remember that. This is the that sketch that I was doing where that woman like tripped and fell. And I was like, oh my God. Like you will remember that forever. Uh, that's just random example that never happened to me. Like I wasn't laughing at anybody. I was, I was like, what if sure you wouldn't, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> like, Yo, that looks like it hurt. No, but you like, say it. But it's that like I was never I was never consistent enough to sit down or, or think that I had enough time in my day to do that. I wish that I I mean I'm I, it's some it's a goal that I would love to be able to achieve one day. Just so interesting you brought that up because I literally just saw somebody that has a little journal. It's it's a certain type of Japanese journal too that's super expensive and I don't remember the name Ooh. of it. It looks yeah. so cool. And it's like, it's got a different page for each day. And she does a little watercolor sketch 
each day, whatever that might be. And it's kind of like you said, a snapshot of that day, whatever that moment was she decided to capture. And I feel like that's got to be more meaningful, even than if you did that with photos. I mean, maybe for photographers, it would be cool. But the fact that we made that thing and it was like through our interpretation, that's so cool. You know, yeah. I love that idea. I don't think I'd ever be consistent to do it daily, but even if just like for a few weeks or something. Yeah. I mean, even that, like, that's so consistency, right? Like, True. yeah, that, that, getting yourself that. a cadence is like good too. It's more realistic anyway. So it's more likely that you'll keep that habit, uh, which is also pacing is really important when you're going to be, if you're going to be consistent, pace yourself because boy, howdy, artists are not good at that at all. Most creatives aren't good at pacing themselves, actually. Um, we're just like, we have to do everything right now or else and we'll, we'll die. It's like, no, you'll burn out. <laughs> so stop it. Uh, but, but like, on yeah. where, depending on who you're with, if you've got that sketchbook journal, it might feel to them that you're not present, that you're right. not in the moment That's while true. they're having a conversation with you and you're sitting there sketching something else. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, that's funny. Haha. <laughs> like you're totally there because you're still in record mode. Yeah. But but it, people don't perceive it that way. They don't. They don't. But the thing the thing for me is the, a, tr a thing I like to do with with the people who are around me, I like to set the stage for who I am as a person. So if I'm sketching around them, I say, "Hey, like I hope you don't mind me sketching, but I can actually listen better while I do this." So don't think I'm not talk I'm not listening to you just because I'm not making eye contact. I can I can process everything you're saying better because I am sketching. So I let them know exactly who I am so that, you know, and if they want to get offended after that, then that's their prerogative, <laughs> but I let them know who I am. So that's how that's I like so... to approach it. Yeah. Um, but, but really like what you said is resonating a lot because every single time I've documented something that I've been at, or like we had, uh, when we had a sketch trip back when I was, uh, in grad school 12 years ago. Wow, 13 years ago I'm dating myself I'm so old um I'm not old but <laughs> it feels like I'm like this feels like yesterday what the heck I can remember every single day so clearly because I documented each and every day of that trip wow. because you know that was like our you know it was, it was our assignment we we're all students and like I was much more keyed into wanting to draw all the time anyway but I would draw like little memories of like, oh, this person was staring at me on the train. So I drew, I drew everybody who stared at me because like, you know, the black girl in Japan, we're not we're not around a lot. I don't know if anybody knows that. <laughs> There's not many of us there. So every time I was like on a train, somebody would just like stare at me. I'm like, why are they staring at me? I'm like, okay, I'm going to draw them. <laughs> draw them. <laughs> like, if you're going to stare, I'm going to stare right back at you and draw you. And that's what I would do. Like, that was my habit. And so I remember every single person who stared at me. And the time the kids swarmed us at the, 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 the museum and like the time the bears fought at the zoo. And like, I have all these little memories because I documented them and I can recall them easier because like you said, Eric, I was recording and that trip is so much more special to me that that sketchbook is like a relic to me because it has like those, that little pocket of that, that moment in time where, whereas otherwise I just forget so many days and so much, I have a terrible memory, but that trip is so vivid in my mind. Yeah. I have uh, a sketchbook from my trip to Italy and there's a, a landscape in Tuscany that I was painting. And every time I look at that sketchbook, I can remember that that was the day that I painted something right before we had lunch. And I got to see, I got to eat prawn for the first time. Oh. And I had no idea what they put in front of me because it still had the head and the eyeballs and the black, <laughs> it was all glistening. And, and I just remember <laughs> curling up and screaming and covering my eyes because I was so freaked out by what they put in front of me. And the 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 woman that was part of our team of landscape painters, the group that I was with, she actually had to take my bowl and cut the food up for me and oh remove God, the head like, like she was my mom. And I was just like, <laughs> thank you so much. But that is burned into my head as if it happened to me yesterday because I have this this little gouache study yeah. and if I could get away with doing that more often I would yeah I want yeah. like a like Miyazaki's kind of like sketchy doodly watercolors like of my day like that would be enough like it does not have to be like a masterpiece like I just want something charming and beautiful like exactly just enough yeah. I mean yeah just enough just enough to capture the moment is really what it is a lot of those sketches were just loose sketches but they were enough to show what I went through that day and like what I saw mm -hmm. and where I was walking 
like I drew like this little house and I, I remember I can recall in like pretty good detail like the exact area that we were around and I would have never re been able to do that otherwise awesome that's so cool I love this you guys I want to see your guys' sketchbooks <laughs> like imagine how cool that would be to like share them with other artists too and be like you know exchange them and see how you remember stuff like I don't know I think that's awesome do you have any sketchbooks like that too Mia I mean, I would always sketch on my trips, but I was, I, I liked subway sketching the best because it's like, you get so many people that just aren't even paying attention to you, don't want to make eye contact with you at all. And they're like perfect, you know, portrait drawing models or same with like waiting for food in a pub or something like that. And yeah, overseas, but I take more pictures, I think when I'm traveling and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, I like the idea of a day to day because it doesn't have to be a special day for you to remember something. You know what I mean? Like it's true. even just a mundane day might have something that like a visual that you just want to record. And that's, I think that's maybe my interest right now more so is just like trying to appreciate the mundane because I don't know, we might not have that for long. You know what I mean? Like I'm at this point where I'm thinking like everything is precious and we don't know how long we will have things the way they are. And yeah. I just appreciate them through my art. So capture these moments. Yeah. Yeah, a day in the mundane. Like, you know, there's like one time I went to this coffee shop and sketched one of their plants that was hanging up. And I have that plant sketch. And every time I look at that, I just remember just being in this coffee shop and, you know, just like sitting and like the, the environment that was around me and how I felt that day, even like I can recall everything. It's very special. Um, and it's actually making, it's inspiring me to actually do this again. Like, just like a little, like one sketch each day, just a little something simple, like start with that and see how it goes because I've had such problems with consistency I'm not going to try to sign myself up for too much but even if I can just capture little moments like that is enough like to have that yeah. it's really yeah. really nice I just don't want to feel pressured to like do it yeah and then feel like I have to post it online oh, no. no don't right? post it online even like why why post <laughs> you don't have to share that it's for yourself yeah I think it'll feel like pressure maybe if, if it's not a habit yet, but I think it becomes a habit over time because you want to do it, right? Like it's, it has to be something that's enjoyable enough that you want to keep doing it, right? That it rewards your brain, but also something you feel like you can do. So if, if it does become too much pressure, it, I don't think you can make it a habit. You know what I mean? Like yeah, stuff that feels like, I hate working out personally. So it's like, I have to find a way that feels sustainable to work out. Like if I'm going to get to see bunnies outside or I don't know, listen to birds, that sounds more enticing than going and sweating in a gym. So I'm going to be more yes. free to make exercise a habit if it's something I actually enjoy and want to do, you know? Yeah. That's, that's why DDR works. So like dance dance revolution works so well for me. Cause I'm like, I hate going to the gym. I don't want to be perceived. I don't want anybody to look at me, but if I play DDR, I can be home. I can be like nice and sweaty. And I can also like learn, relearn a skill that I had learned like a long, a long time ago. And it's fun. And, you know, now I'm like, okay, like, I don't know if I feel like playing DDR anymore, but I might want to try skating or I might want to try like going to the bouldering gym more to climb and like just different kinds of habits that make my brain happy because it's more likely that you'll actually do it if you want to do it. Yeah. And sometimes you have to force yourself to do the thing that you don't want to do, but then you find that you desire to do it after you've realized like oh like this wasn't as, as bad as I thought or like I like how I felt after this is done so so some things are worth trying even if you like don't know if you're inclined to it just try it anyway and see what happens and if you don't like it then you know sure try something else that you might like better but like give yourself a chance to do new things and learn new things and just do better for yourself it's just nice to have that totally. it's important to keep ourselves growing but yeah definitely need to learn new skills and and keep expanding my mindset you know dementia and stuff like that runs in my family so i gotta be careful get on top of that early yeah for sure yeah but that was fun that was fun i, I want to make a visual journal now i know me too oh my gosh <laughs> man and i can i can yeah whatever at next episode or whatever i can definitely we should like do sketchbook tours i would love to see your sketchbooks like i want to know what y'all draw in your spare time that's so I, boring they're just like, i just have, do like, not say that sketchbooks not, like... of like aliens and stuff i just do like cartoon awesome. alien sketches but super... yes but yes nothing that i Correct. ever post or, or you share. Don't have it's just to. like i do i do them because i think this would make a really cool sculpture that's cool right that's awesome but it's never for anybody to see but that sounds so that sounds really cool and creative like mines are always like so feel like so 
structured it's like anatomy studies for paintings on Mariana it's nothing like you've seen like James Jean's sketchbook where it's like all flowing and like <laughs> imagination and whatever and I'm like no that's not my sketchbook at all <laughs> James Jean's sketchbooks are like again like if we if you're not inclined if we're not inclined to work like that we don't don't aspire to something that you know you're not going to do yeah, <laughs> just no. mean to yourself I'm like I'm not I'm not going to do that because I'm like but why though like I just <laughs> want to make the finished piece I but I like sketching for me like the way I've sketched is like very loose and like it's mostly magical girls and flower dresses and whatever but it's like the things that I like to sketch and sometimes I like to draw my cats or plants from life and people I see at the airport or whatever like it's just a mix of a little, a little bit of everything that's awesome yeah are you doing your stuff in pen pencil watercolor what do you so guys do i specifically use a prismacolor uh cold erase that are apparently discontinued and they're oh. awesome to yeah they're discontinued so uh you should some people were selling them on Bocal and etsy so buy that stuff because they don't sell them anymore those are gone now no yeah i have tape on this one but <laughs> oh no oh no <laughs> buy more <laughs> yeah i got um yeah i got a box uh of what is this I, tuscan red is one of my favorite to sketch in so these are the ones that i'm using right now and i also got a uh, non-photo blue um i think i got the red ones as well but yeah i i bought a i bought like four boxes of them when i realized that they were gone because i, I want to have like a lifetime supply mm -hmm. of uh cola race and this is not enough what's cola race uh their the color brand? Yeah, well, it's Prismacolor, um, and it's a Coley race. It's the brand of pencil. It's this, uh, but it's basically a colored pencil that is erasable. Um, but the oh. lead is nice and soft, and it's like buttery. Yeah. It's, it feels really good to sketch with. Okay, great sketching lead. I've been using watercolor pencils and a watercolor brush. That's awesome. Nice. Um, watercolor color pencils. Yeah. So I've got flesh tone. And I've got a couple of random ones. Mm -hmm. um, so like if I just like if I'm just sitting out and I want to just do a quick portrait of somebody, I could, I just do it like that, like scribble it all together and then just hit it with the watercolor brush. I love that. That's awesome. And make a little quick watercolor painting out of it. But like when my son got his tonsils taken out and he's like laying up in the bed, I'm like, oh man, I would love to just like sit here and do his little portrait. But then I thought, oh, he's miserable right now i should probably be like dad mode <laughs> no, not... sketching your son's misery yeah. <laughs> of my son's misery yeah like this is the time like, when he is... was just like oh yeah no <laughs> like, so yeah i gotta I I love it. <laughs> the urge to be an artist at any given moment right but then i thought this is probably the like the longest he's ever gonna stay perfectly still that's true that's <laughs> I mean, if there's nothing you can do for him in the moment, might as well <laughs> capture it, you know? Like, he's just, you know, he's got his right. medicine. He's right. sleeping. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. Oh. That, that's, that's the that's the situation. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's hard to decide. Like, yeah. when, when do I switch into art mode? Art mode versus oh, wow. parent mode. What about you, Mia? What do you sketch with? I love these, the Derwent drawing pencils. Do you know these Ooh. ones? Ooh. Hang on, I'm not even showing the tip. Of what it oh, was. the tips are so fat. Yeah, and and they're really smooth too. I really like drawing with those. Um, there's also the black wing pencils. Oh, the black wings are so sick. I love those. Yeah, these ones. Yeah, are... those are great. Can't even line this up. <laughs> yeah, black wings are classics. Yeah. Yeah, they're and really really good. They're just they're just fun to sketch with. It's not really like you can. I mean, I sketch with ballpoint pen too, or like felt tip uh what is this kind of pen like i don't know um, oh yeah oh yeah i know what you're, i know what those are oh those, i love those pens so much I those are great so pens much. those japanese they're, uh inking pens yeah they're super fun to do gestures with and stuff like um so it's like not really the medium that matters but i it's usually a drawing medium and i love the idea of, of doing a sketchbook with watercolor or paint because that scares me you know like i don't know why paint has scared me so much but in the past year I've had to paint so much that I'm getting over that fear so I'm I'm more open to the idea of sketching and being more loose with with, with paint. paint so that sounds like something worth trying <laughs> yeah that's some, it's funny because it's something I endeavored to do when I traveled to the UK and just did not do it at all <laughs> and I was just like oh like why didn't I do this like but I was just experiencing everything like as yeah. they came and it was so you know it felt so fresh that I don't think I needed to but next time I go I definitely want to uh 
do some sketching and it's like sit for a little bit and you know like if I'm in the coffee shop or if we're sitting anyway just like sketch whatever's happening around just to have a little bit of documentation of that and have a visual journal Lauren I'm laughing because like my last two trips that I, I went to before the pandemic was like bringing my watercolor set with me for that exact same reason and it did not get used <laughs> yep same I did the exact same I brought my watercolor set I had my little watercolor sketch pad it yeah. went nowhere with me nowhere <laughs> my sketchbook did because it's easy you just pull out a pen and you just draw but like the whole watercolor setup felt like oh it's a step too much you know like, it feels like such a to-do and I have to like have, like sit like find a, a comfortable place to sit and get the stuff out and then like you know get the brush in the water and it's just a lot it feels like a lot well that's where something like this comes yeah, in true i do have these these are great so, yeah if you can if i can yeah even still there. i have to get the palette out to get like so, some but you have yeah, watercolor it's... uh you have pencils. watercolor pencils yeah it's like so yeah so i unscrew Better this idea. pour the water in mm -hmm. and, and you just like uh, squeeze them squeeze them ups yeah <laughs> and brush that's awesome yeah. i do need to i need to get more color pencils again i think i have some still it's a good idea yeah i want to draw i just want to draw flowers from places i go to that'd be fun be fun yeah and... i've said it before but it's like i can picture myself when i'm 80 just like hobbling around from city to city just drawing strangers like that would be my oh. dream to just like draw different people <laughs> if i can still have motor functions you know like that's yeah it. that's all i need <laughs> just like this little old lady <laughs> you know yeah i would love that yeah i wouldn't be like like a little old witch just like with like a little safe haven house or whatever it's like a little young artist can come and like sketch and like i'll just like oh like this is how you do this and feed them little tea and cookies and you know like we all sketch together like this would be nice <laughs> and in a like next to a forest or in a forest that's it like that's definitely 100 percent. like the like the girl from kiki's delivery service is life goals for me <laughs> oh, <yeah. Yeah. laughs> that'll be perfection and just like mentor them and like send them off into the world with like a better sense of self and like advocate self-advocacy <laughs> that's so great cottage with flowers hanging from the ceiling and you know <laughs> tea always on the pot <laughs> that's awesome and, and just two cats and maybe a few snakes as well <laughs> <laughs> a, <few> few. Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> a monitor lizard that i have on like a lead <laughs> there we go <laughs> my little fae witch life i like it i love it what about you eric what's your like ideal <laughs> ideal like when i'm older as an older artist like what's your like silly fan do you have a fantasy vision of yourself of like this like you know magical like wizened artist like doing whatever mm -hmm. like what is like your do you have like, i want to know if you have that self-image oh man um you know what i never think about i never th i never think about that honestly really i i don't i there's i want to do like really big canvas i really want to do like really big sci-fi paintings i know i've said that a couple times that like that's a goal now whether I'm some 80 year old guy doing it, I don't know. I just, um, I really don't project that far ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably should. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm well, just, I mean, everybody thinks differently. It's like yeah. not that you should, it's just like a thing that I always think of. I'm like, oh, like it'd be fun to, you know, be this when I'm older. Yeah. I just I I haven't had enough free time to even think about what it would be like to have free time. Eric, <laughs> Eric, that's so sad. I think we need to we need to focus on that first. Yeah, we gotta fix that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Right now, I think the 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 farthest I project, honestly, the farthest I can project myself into the future is waiting for the day that we're no longer paying for daycare so that i can just like have that extra money in my pocket to do something with oh my god oh that's about as far so i only project about two years so i guess it's, yeah so that's two years more of daycare and then off to school they go off to school and then yeah so um but i did try something new 
I tried Krav Maga. <gasps> you did? Ooh, how'd that go? Uh, I spent most of the class, because I, I trained with martial arts for years before that. Really? And I spent... I spent most of the class going, why, why can't we do it like this? Or why don't we do it like that? <laughs> you know, it's like different recipes for the same food. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and the guy's like, well, because I could still punch you with this arm. And I go, well, why don't I just do this? <laughs> you know? So I said, I, I'm not going to pay for this. <laughs> I, I was a, it was a oh, trial no. class. And I said, this is I'm not going to do this <laughs> if it's just if it, if I just need to exercise I could just go or not go to the gym for ten dollars a month right rather than pay over a hundred dollars a month for a class I would never go to mm -hmm. so and this unfortunately isn't a fist fight country so you know I'm not I'm not even gonna worry about somebody going see you outside takes me back yeah that's all you, you had to worry see about me? Is, like, huh? like that guy's got some moves <laughs> that's all i had to worry about oh, man. i don't know so i did try that um but yeah i'm looking for the next thing to try but that's I, I don't really project i know there's a i have goals there's stuff i want to do but i think no i take that back i do think about my making art but i think more about legacy after i'm gone mm -hmm. um so i i didn't talk about i don't think i mentioned it or talked about it on this but i was uh invited to attend this opening gala uh, for this Afrofuturism exhibition last month um, at, yeah, the, at the Smithsonian. And it got me thinking, and I, cause I've talked to a friend of mine, I've talked to Tim, Tim Fielder, who was mm -hmm. our, our, our past guest on the show um, about that legacy. And, you know, we were talking about artists that, uh, had their work shown in the salon in 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 Paris, you know, a hundred years ago. There were artists out there just as good as Sargent, just as good as Monet, just as good as all these other people, but they didn't get the recognition because they weren't in the right place uh, at the right time, the right crowd, the right audience, the mm -hmm. right. They didn't know the right people that got them in to that show. And that was the statement that was like who you know, the who's who mm -hmm. of that art movement, right? And I just started thinking, okay, well, as a sci-fi fantasy illustrator, the who's who's are getting the Hugo Awards, the Chesley Awards. So you can go back in time and say, well, who was the most award-winning Hugo award-winning blah 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 okay well then that person is like cemented in history as being awesome right long after they're gone like what's what's what are you leaving behind what's your legacy like what are you going to paint that's going to make people or hopefully talk about you a hundred years from now or should you even be th thinking that like that you're ever going to make something so amazing that somebody is doing a lecture on you a hundred years from now. I don't, I, if you could ask Sergeant that, do you think that people are going to be arguing over who was better, you or Zorn? You know? <laughs> like, like, no, like, that was, they were just, they were just doing what they loved. They probably weren't thinking about that kind of thing, but maybe they were, I don't know. I mean, look at Rockwell. When he died, he thought he was a failure. He thought he was not even an, a real artist. And it's like, we're still talking about him. It, like, you know, I think that's yeah. true too. Some right. of the people that do have a legacy had no idea when the impact right. they would have. But uh, yeah. part of that had to be his own humility and maybe his own his own issues because the man was world famous before he died. For sure, yeah. But it was like, it was more like whether it was illustration or art and that kind of debate too. Right all that stuff for sure.
but I just mean that it's like I think it's interesting how you don't have control over that yeah there are definitely things you can do in your lifetime to try to ensure that but at the end of the day it you know we don't (laughs) right yeah right you can just do the best you can and and uh if people like it they like it if they don't they don't yeah um yeah is illustration real art god that's a whole nother topic (sighs) yes if it's art like (laughs) it's like the stuff that was considered art at that time i don't even want to look at but okay (laughs) (laughs) same (laughs) It's like we're, yeah that's all that's an entire episode <laughs> what's real art oh god <laughs> it's subjective that's that's, it's, a- that's the whole thing <laughs> it is completely subjective <laughs> the talking aliens that i drew was art as well as the queens that i draw now is art <laughs> yeah that's what it is what is art i don't know art is our connection to the universe or whatever <laughs> to each other you know i was thinking that while you're saying that eric like actually you have already kind of ensured that in as best the way you can is just by painting the work that you want to make the stuff that you're passionate about like those pieces speak to people now and i have no doubt they'll speak to anybody with you know a beating heart in the future too you know in the sense that you've seen those pieces from 100 years ago that stopped you in your tracks and it's that same thing so that is something you can control Uh, so as much time you can carve out to make those kinds of paintings i think one of the best yeah. things you can do because i yeah. look at it's a niche it's a very small niche it's kind of like people that do landscape um like western landscapes uh there's just like a certain niche of of commercial illustrators certain number of commercial illustrators that once they hit a certain age no matter what they were doing like all of a sudden they just start painting westerns like what <laughs> is it about that <laughs> They just fall into the Western niche. Yeah, they just fall into it. And like then all, like, all of a sudden, their entire portfolio is like Native Americans with like valleys and stuff like that and like buffalo paintings and stuff. And you just go, who who wants that? Like, who do you know that I don't? <laughs> but like, clearly, there's a lot of people out there that are this. They, they, that's, they want to decorate so, a house with. Yeah. Yeah yeah but, it's interesting um it's like do the stuff that makes you happy though maybe they're right. retiring like, to warmer climates and that's what they decorate their house they're just like oh this is pretty just like draw them <laughs> <laughs> or or it's like what they always wanted to paint and they just never got the chance to do it before because they were chasing a career and then they're like you know what i'm just gonna paint the thing i want and for some Possibly. reason it was western they thought it was Possibly. fun i i part of me thinks that they found out how much they could sell a sell a painting for Oh, so like sick. it's like you're selling it to oil tycoons and yeah i mean texas or something right they found they knew where the money was so they i mean knew where the you money know was i respect the hustle right. <laughs> they enjoy, i hope they liked it but you know they, they had to eat i mean even if they don't like it it's like they still had to eat right if if two paintings a year put your kids through college listen <laughs> Right. And I'm painting some landscapes in a desert. Let's go. <laughs> like, I'm rendering buffalo nostrils today, honey. So yeah, that's that's like, what I'm gonna be doing. I'm but... gonna put on the old gramophone or whatever and let that go, just like right. vibe. <laughs> Who cares about legacies and blah blah blah? It's painting some you know, dust and some cacti. There you go. Getting off into the sunset. That's right. Listen, <laughs> whatever you gotta do. <laughs> I'm not here to gatekeep what you should and shouldn't paint. <laughs> yep. Mm-mm-mm. Just vibe. So on Twitter, there was like, you know, those a name posts are just like they show old sculptures like Michelangelo and like the, you know, Nike um in the Louvre and everything. They're like, why don't artists make this art anymore? Because they were paid to make that art. <laughs> They're paid very well to make that art. <laughs> i don't know it actually makes me laugh so much every time somebody's like why don't artists just make this you know stuff anymore it's like honey do you know the state of things right now it ain't great for us because like back then artists were revered and they got a grant for like years to paint to make that one thing 
they don't do stuff like that no more. That's why we're not making stuff like that. We don't got time. And we have to eat. Yeah, that was also entertainment art, right? Like there were no movies, anything. That's people went to museums for entertainment. So Mm -hmm. that was the highest paid kind of art, you know? Now it's entertainment artists, video game artists, film artists, you know? But it's like, you made it this way. You're paying with your dollars what you want to see. So you're part of the problem audience. Exactly. It's like, sir, we live in a society. (laughs) It's it's so silly. But (laughs) until we get the life, we get the setup that we need in order to make a painting, like or painting or sculpture or art like that, like a magnum opus, like one piece, like it's not going to be easy for us to do that until. I think that's why artists fantasize about retirement, you know, as if we have like four hundred one k's, which is a whole other thing. But like. We fantasize about retirement because we have a dream. What, what the dream mainly is, is us living without having to worry about money. Yeah. That's, that's really what it is. That's why we fantasize about ourselves being old and like, you know, wizened and we hobble around our little cottage that like, and like in those fantasies, money is not a thing. Yeah. Money is not a worry. We could just make what we want because we're like, oh, we're done. Yeah. Well, honestly, that's, that's also my my plan is just to like buy some kind of real estate save up and get some kind of rental property i mean that's kind of my retirement uh at the moment is Mm -hmm. you know if i could if i could do some kind of rental property and maybe uh or some kind of beach property or something like that and then have a an art workshop or something like that happen you know annually then you know live off of that and then just paint what i want yeah but i I don't think a lot of artists think about project that far ahead it's it's very present in the moment because you're always there is just enough time in the day to chase after what is chase that carrot yeah yeah right but then there isn't really a thought of oh right my vision's starting to go my hand's starting to shake what am i going to do now or what do i do if that happens but again yeah that's that's a whole other conversation but they don't teach you that in college of course not you think they live forever (laughs) back then it's like you know now you have your skills now run that race yeah go be faster be better even if they taught it, we would it, at 20 be like, no way, that's not going to be me. I'm going to be drawing down 100, 120, you know? <laughs> I was like, I don't like, like, I don't know if I will be or, or won't be, but I think the goal is to be happy either way. Yeah. To feel accomplished either way or feel like, I guess you never feel satisfied. There's always more stuff that you want to do, but to just like have contentment without needing to be the best artist to have that contentment yeah just know that you've done a good job and that like okay like i can i can rest a a bit now yeah it's so it's so idyllic because it's restful because we're not racing a race anymore yeah and it's like i i would i think when you are not having to chase all those things then drawing or creating or whatever you have to do becomes about the act and less about how it looks and less about you know the the product but it's more about like this gives me joy and i can actually finally do it for the, just that you know mm-hmm. exactly to me so. yeah getting back to how art felt in childhood where you didn't have to worry about money or how it's looking to anybody else or you just drew because you wanted to yeah. oh, the best yeah <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, I know it was very freeform, but I think it's fun that way. So if you like this conversation, uh, you know, please leave a comment. Thank you for participating in the live chat, as always. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. Smash that notification button, you know, what, or whatever. But really, your support means a lot. So, uh, you know, we really appreciate every little bit that you give us. Um, we just, we're just, you know, we do it for fun, but also for the inspiration of whoever wants to tune in and listen. And we hope you're a little bit more inspired and motivated to do something that is, you know, your touch of reality, your little pocket of joy. Um, You know, so go out and be present in life and experience it. Have a good one, everybody. See you next time.